Oh my goodness, what's happening, everybody? Do you remember when I used to start every show with the song? I you do. I'm having flashbacks. I think I have PTSD. <laughs> I'm about thought I'm it was over, but here I come bringing it back up. Oh my god, if somebody gives her a super chat and she has to do the song again, I I don't I'm know. I'm not doing a super chat song, but I will sing. Oh come on. Super chat song? You actually really like the super chat song. That's true. It we haven't done one of those in a long time. Yeah, it's been a very long time. All right. What is happening, everybody? It's Sunday, Sunday live haul, a regular Sunday show. A lot of stuff is happening in this last week, a lot of fun stuff to share with you guys. Oh my goodness, it's been such a busy week. Did you just go like this? Oh my goodness. I did. It's been such a busy week. <laughs> You're tired from you and your from your words that from doing nothing. All the things. Um yet nothing, but all the things. <laughs> Anyway, we have a good show today. This is a regular Sunday show. But uh, yeah, this last week, the last few days have been really fun. Um, List Perfectly is doing their listing party in the USA national tour. I mean, I don't know if they're going into any other I don't think it's going to be international tour. It's probably national just a domestic tour. national tour. Yeah. And so uh, our very good friend Trish came in on Wednesday. So we got to have a little uh, time with Trish. And then Teresa came in on Thursday. We had all kinds of other stuff going on. And Red Robin, oh, she, she's jumping right on it with a $1.99 mm -hmm. super chat. I got a song for you, Robin. Hey, everybody, look at this cool thing I got in the mail. Beep, 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 beep. Seriously, look at this. Robin and Joe sent this to me in the mail, and I was super excited. Vicky was like, you got a present. And I was like, what? I got a present, and I opened it. Seriously, look at how cool this is. You guys know how look I love my back. gremlins. Look at the picture in the back. You know how I love my gremlins, but I got this from Robin. It's and real then, cute. And then Robin, I took so I took this out of the box, and I immediately put it on display in my office and Vicky was like doing her shipping and she didn't realize till after she already put the label on that she apparently stole my box from me that this came in and I used it to ship something and then realized it was covered in horror stickers. I'm like, yeah, cause that was for me, not for one of your customers who now gets to have a cool box and it's just like gone. I don't get to have it anymore. Thanks a lot. All the work, you know, Robin's probably spent hours decorating that box just for me. Anyway, I did. So hopefully whoever she mailed uh, some baseball hats to is not offended by all the amazing. Hey, well, you know, anyway, I'm saving the environment. Thank you, Robin, for my present. <laughs> Such a dork. Anyway. Such a dork. So a yeah. song. Anyway, so, so the, so anyway, so everybody was in town for this thing. Um, it was basically, they're going around and, you know, promoting List perfectly and listening party stuff and basically teaming up with local meetups where they can. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was our turn in Vegas. And but before their event, we did a little a little piggyback event, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, we did a come thrift with us. Yeah. So we put together not that not that it was a put together of any sort. It was just we advertised, put the word out and said, hey, mm -hmm. a lot of our local meetup people, let's all get together at the bins. We get together at the bins on Friday. And then List Perfectly gave out um, big Ikea style handbags with List Perfectly logo mm -hmm. on them um, to the first 10 people that showed up. We had probably 25 or 30 people show up to thrift at the bins at on least. Friday for a, a couple of hours. And it was so fun. Um, I'm definitely going to do that at once a month. I feel like we should because the thing is you already go to the bins. I've been wanting to go to the bins more now. Mm -hmm. um, that sales are down and I need to be a little bit more, uh, careful with how I source. And the reality is every time I go with you, I at least find a couple things that are really cool and it's close to us. So yeah, there's no reason to not say, Hey, everybody else come join us and have fun. Yeah. And hang out. And then maybe we could all go do lunch after or something. You know, it was fun. It was fun. So, um, I had gone with the full intent to not really get anything because I figured, you know, I go to the bins all the time and this is why I was just going to kind of try to help people because we have in our group that are all different levels of sellers and all different mm -hmm. people know well, that always ask or they, a bunch of people have been to the bins so i figured i'd be like okay i'll just be here if you have a question like should you get this or is this a good thing or is that a good thing and i pulled a few things and i gave some things that i found and pulled to other people and then i still ended up filling a cart yeah somehow true. i still filled a cart 
I gave a couple things away and then I selfishly kept some as well. Same. But it was a lot of fun because, it, you know, it's crazy because we go to the bins and, and of you know, course there's 50 regulars there too, right? Especially so. at least, and especially like with the stuff that I source, the t-shirt bros are there. And every time I've gone in the last few weeks, it's the same guys that are there like every day, no matter what day of the week you go. No, they're always there. And yet even still, I was able to find some cool vintage. Um, and I was like, I could see how somebody could just like go every morning for an hour and a half, immediately go home you know, wash it, do whatever they need to do with it, photograph it and have it listed by the end of the day. And you could probably make a pretty decent living just doing Rinse that. Rinse and repeat and just do yeah, that just doing day. that. And it's fun mm -hmm. and it's cheap. Um, and so yeah, had a good time. Yeah. I had a lot of fun and, and it just shows like, even with all of us there, I feel like everybody was finding some really cool mm -hmm. stuff. Teresa found who Teresa's not even a thrifter found some really cool vintage. It was like a vintage Lisa Frank stamp set or something yes, like that. Yes, vintage 90s Lisa Frank mm -hmm. dead stock stamp set. She's like, is this the right Lisa Frank? Is this the good one or is this the new Dollar Tree one? I'm like, yeah, that's the good one, you brat. <laughs> so <laughs> she found that. And then we have, um, yeah, anyway, so then we had our get together. We had it at the Blind Center because, of course, we love doing uh, uh, events at the Blind Center. We love no reason our, to do anywhere else. our partnership and friendship that we have with that organization and that facility. So we had um, the listing party in the USA appreciation party at the Blind Center. So we had 65 people come. Um, we did have a lot of people come from California, Arizona, and Jill and uh, Rick Mustacha came from uh, Utah. So we did have a really good group. And it was very nice because there were, I mean, with that many people, there were several people that don't regularly attend our meetups, but there were also people that only can come to a them occasionally yeah so we did meet a few new people which was really nice um they had the amazing tacos of course that they made for us oh my god they yes. had these cute little sombreros as centerpieces in the middle of the table they were like full chips. size sombreros and they put like they lined them with whatever and put all the chips were on there and there was salsa but it's like the salsa the i i don't remember her name i don't know if i even know her name the one that the girl that makes the, the salsa that makes yeah all, but she's basically the one the mastermind behind the tacos and stuff that we had at the remix so they basically did those tacos but then they also had like she said the chips and salsa but guys the best part like the, the food was amazing the, the dessert. dessert okay you had the trace leches Yep, thing. I had the trace leches, kind of the it's like it was yeah. like a fruit little mini parfait thing. But, but then, then they, I also had that. But then yeah. they had first of all, they had horchata to drink because like just like they did the remix, they had horchata and a couple other juices. Plus we had a bar and everything. But they did horchata ice cream. Guys, I've never homemade, been made homemade horchata. I've ice never cream. been like crazy about horchata, but the horchata ice cream was insane. And they made churros, and the churros came out like they had just taken them out of the fryer just sugared them up, cinnamon them up. And they were, mm -hmm. so they had that like crisp crunch to the outside, but they were soft and chewy in the middle. And we were taking the churros and dipping it in the horchata ice cream. It was seriously insane. We are going to insist that for the remix this year, you know, for you guys were there last year, we had dessert in the afternoon. We're going to make sure that we can get, hopefully we can at least that happen. I don't know if they can do the ice cream. For I know it's a little bit harder people. to we'll do. Say. 400 people is a big difference from 65. But however, it was, it was so, so good. crazy good. And then last night, a few of us got together at um, at the Cosmo in in a suite at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Clara had a suite. Clara from Let's Perfectly had a suite. Mm -hmm. And there were a few of us that got together and we got to hang out and have some some beers, as Trish would say. We had some beers and we had some dinner and we got to hang out uh, with a great view of the strip. We were like right over the um, the fountain, the Bellagio, Bellagio fountain. Fountains. And um, anyway, we just had what a great time. It was, it's was. it been all in all a great few days. Yeah. Um, I was able to talk to and get to know some people that I didn't know very well before that I've only met a couple of times. One yeah. of them being um, local reseller that I'm sure a lot of you guys know, Carrie, uh, retail arbitrage, yep. um, American arbitrage, I'm sorry, uh, Carrie and his wife, Dawn. And we've only met them once through at our remix, but they live here locally. Yeah. And um been trying to get them to come to our meetup. And I think they will now. It but, was um, it was nice to be able to do the thing last night at the Cosmo because, you know, like for me, I do have believe it or not, even though I seem like an extrovert to a lot of people, uh, when it comes to really big groups of people, I'm a little bit more withdrawn, not withdrawn, but I have social anxiety a little bit. So it's it's, it's a little bit more draining on me and not as much fun necessarily when it's a lot of people and I'm having to make small talk with a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. And so it was nice follow up to last night, have like a smaller group where it was, I think there was like maybe 12 of us 
and um, being in and being able to just kind of have more in-depth conversations and chill out. Yeah, it was nice. And, it was nice to get to know get to know people better and and get to hang out with some of our favorite people. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was beautiful. Um, this whole week has been, has been a lot of fun and, and always just reminds us it's been a nice, um, energy boost for me. Um, personally, I don't yeah. know about Katie, but it's been a nice Jesus. energy boost for me. Like we love doing the remix. We love meeting and talking to all of these people and meeting new people and putting on, you know, the event, um, with Teresa, but it's also, and I love doing a meetup, right? I do the meetup. Yeah. I try to do it once a month. In fact, Katie just like shows up. She's like, whatever, you just do it. But um, I schlep stuff. She schlep stuff. But I getting together with our reseller friends and the in the reseller community is just so energizing for me. I love yeah. it. It reinvigorates me. Um, I, I really enjoy doing it, even if it's just a couple of our friends that we hang out with here and there, or we go on our little sourcing trip. We go to Denver and we get to see Liz mm -hmm. and and Kristen and whatever it may be. But um, it's a lot of fun. And I'm gonna say my pitch once again that you really need to find a local meetup near you if you're able to. And if you do not have one, create your own. And I'm happy to help walk you through how to do that. Yes. Because having your own community to talk to and hang out with and occasionally get together with, as long as it's within a couple of hours, do it once a month. Do it every couple of months. So it's really important. Any of you who are in or near the Dallas area, that's the next stop for the Listening Party in the USA tour um, for List Perfectly. And it's free, by they, the way. This is, this is free. This is an appreciation yes. event. The List don't Perfectly, pay. Yes. The List Perfectly part of it is going to be on Tuesday, but Monday, tomorrow. And I don't have the details here, guys, so you're going to have to like do a little extra work to get there. But tomorrow, Monday, is like the regular meetup. Mm -hmm. That's Stephanie, is. Stephanie Stephanie Ng runs that meetup, and she's had this meetup for more than 20 years. It's mm -hmm. the eBay meetup group. It's eBay's and uh, eBay's, eBay's and, and emails. emails. I don't know. Dallas but, meetup. And then Tuesday, again, I don't have the details here, guys. I'm just trying to make you guys aware. Tuesday, um, Teresa is somebody you can reach out to and get more info about them. But Tuesday is when it's going to be listing uh, list perfectly uh, thing. Yeah, and you doing. can you can find that in their Facebook group on their Facebook. Uh, YouTube pages and and on their uh, Instagram and stuff like that, which is the other thing I was going to say. If you want to see more uh, in, in information and content about what we did in these last few days, follow List Perfectly on Instagram because mm -hmm. their content creator and TikTok and TikTok, their content creator was here and filming and editing and interviewing people. And it's there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff yeah. up there over the next. Week well, or we so. were sending stuff back to Celine back home, uh, where wherever she's located, and she was posting mm -hmm. stuff too. So lots of fun little TikToks and reels. We did all kinds of TikToks. TikToks. We did TikToks, <laughs> which was fun. It was fun to be silly. Uh, but yeah, I do think we should do the, the bids thing once a month. There's no reason not to. Really yeah, it doesn't have to be organized. We're, we're already going. It's literally just a matter of, you know, in our local group. I'll know, just throw it in the local going. group. We're we'll going be there. On, we're going on this day. Everybody, let everybody that's going to come meet up and we'll have fun. Yeah. All right, but we but we have got some cool stuff to share with you guys that we found at the bins this week. And I think it's really interesting. And um, this is our regular Sunday show. We break it up into three parts. The first part, we look at our real numbers for the last week, the gross numbers across all our platforms. We look at uh, the basic costs, such as shipping, fees, and most importantly, in my opinion, the cost of goods. And then in the middle part of our show, we look at some sales highlights for the last week, some cool stuff we sold or educational, interesting, whatever. And then the last part is our actual haul. And I think you know, I don't just have t-shirts to show this week. I think I've got a little more variety. I've got some interesting stuff, including a really exciting big surprise thing that Teresa actually got for me and gave to me today um, that I'm excited to show you guys because I'm very excited that see, I got it. See how Katie gets presents? She gets presents in the mail. Teresa buys her presents. Hmm. 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 I get no presents. Sorry, guys. Somebody send Vicky a present so she's not sad anymore. What, could, what kind of presents could they send you? What would you know. like? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I don't collect stuff like you. You're easier to buy. She, she gets, stuff you guys, more. she gets real sad. She gets real sad because people send me cool stuff. And I'm like, yeah, because I talk about the dumb stuff that I'm into. I go, <laughs> I go, you just True. need. I go, you just need to come up with something that would make you happy and start talking about how it's something you're obsessed with. And maybe somebody will send you a present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't send me people and stuff. Laura's gonna send you chocolate. Oh, I like chocolate. Oh, but but she doesn't like dark chocolate. 
I only like not milk. to be picky, guys. But I only like milk chocolate. I am, picky. but nothing would make nothing would make Vicky more sad than if somebody went out of their way to send her chocolate and then it was chocolate because she'd have to give it to me, and then she'd cry and she'd be like, <laughs> "Got my present." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> ridiculous. All right, so let's get into today's show. Let's go ahead and. Uh, That's true. I do love Peacock's Cara, Cara but please don't send me Peacock. No, stuff. here's the thing, though. She has she's reached critical mass when it comes to Peacock stuff on the house. So uh, the so the, we are we are past the Peacock present giving deadline no more peacock greg i heard vicky has a gold coin collection yeah sure I, you can add to that collection for me if you'd like uh Kristen, we don't really like to like post, like even though our our mailing address is on like all of our return labels so it's not like we necessarily have we, it. A we just don't we just don't we don't we're not gonna post any more in their stuff because that feels like you know, it gives us false security to just not actually have it posted anywhere. Kristen actually has our address because she labels for me, so she's gonna <laughs> she's trying to help you get presents. It's true. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Poor little Vicky. I know. Poor little Vicky doesn't get enough presents, you guys. <laughs> All right. Um, That's true. Listen, Robin does Robin, send me presents. Robin, she was very excited about the arrows. I, she just listen. They're right here. I you, I love them. And actually, Crystal used some this week on my list. So I do love them. Thank you. Here's the thing. Also, he I'm is real, a bit I of really a negative Nelly. Really. He is a little bit of a negative Nelly. So she forgets the good times and only thinks about the bad times. Thanks. And then the bad times in her head is that nobody loves her. Yep. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I, I'm um, gonna eat some worms. Isn't that the song? I don't know. That's, My mom used to say that. You're taking a little too far. <laughs> um, Kara says peacocks and horror don't make sense. Oh, no. Sense. I don't know. I thought that was a pretty cool uh, thing in the jiggy that you gave us. Okay. Let's go ahead and share the screen here. For So here's the thing. eBay has been being pretty nice to me the last couple weeks. Not great. I'm not going to say great. But yes. when I have been hurt and injured and physically affronted many times by eBay over the last like probably <laughs> year and a half. Uh, I've been personally with, attacked with, with only making like, you know, 500 in a whole week, 600, 700, 800, even, even getting a thousand for the week feels like a major victory. Actually getting to like 1500 for the week on eBay for the last couple of weeks, two, three weeks now, I'm like, Oh, maybe it's being nice to me now. But then of course my other platforms drop. So it's like they can't win, guys. They can't win. But I'm feeling like eBay's at least at least eBay has some more activity going on. So 26 eBay orders, three Etsy orders, nothing on Instagram or private, five is with Grail Macari for a total of 34. eBay, my gross sales there, $1,557.43. Um, Etsy's been real, real quiet. I haven't sold anything in the last few days. I finally just sold something today for like $44 or something, but $143.07. Um, Grill Macari, another 348. So just barely squeaking past the 2000, uh, 2048 dollars and 50 cents. Shipping 10407. You can see the breakdown of the fees. Uh, cost of goods 350. So my net total sales 1348 dollars and 62 cents. My gross average sale price definitely lower than what I usually like. I like to hit 70 and above, but I've been I listed like a whole bunch of my movies from my movie collection stuff I've been wanting to sell. Actually, been selling quite a few of them. I think I have like five of them to go out tomorrow, but those are like 30, 40 bucks a pop. So, I'm, so they're definitely like bringing down my average a little bit. Um, my 30, 40 bucks is kind of my average in general lately, <laughs> right? But my average is usually like damn. 70. So, the 34, I mean, that's what I want to sell them for is like $30 a piece. So, uh, so my net average is 39 67 so I'm I'm not feeling as despondent lately over my sales. Uh, that makes one of us. <laughs> I'm said as um, it's real bad. I did I did still have a zero sales day this week. eBay has been, man, it's like been throwing out those zero sales days. I'm having like I feel like I'm having one or two every week. Um, but I did have a day where I was actually like over four hundred dollars. Another day I was over three hundred. So um, it's tough. It's just, it's kind of, it's definitely a roller coaster. I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with eBay, but it is what it is. Um, and hopefully, I mean, I feel like I've got some really cool stuff to, to list this week. I do want to get into to doing like the bins more. 
which I'm sure you'll be happy to hear because that means mm -hmm. I'll take you. And that means you'll go like with it. me. I don't you like, like going by myself. I don't want to do yard sales. I'm trying to pawn her off on Jesse because uh, he likes to do he wants to do more yard sale stuff. So I told him to take Vicky. So I'm not doing that, but I will, I will take you to, uh, to the bins. I'm going on Tuesday. All right. Next up, what you got? Not a whole lot. <laughs> 36 eBay orders, seven on Etsy, seven on Posh. All of my platforms are so slow this week. Four on Macari, 54 total. It's not the number. It's just uh, the number, the, the dollar amount is really, really low. So 15.40 on eBay, uh, just freaking atrocious. 274 on Etsy, 320 on Poshmark, both terrible. 119 on Macari, meh. For Man. a total of twenty two fifty five for the week, I, I got to tell you guys, it's. I was saying this earlier. I am unemployable. I have not had a real job in so long, but if these numbers do not increase. I am going to have to get a side get job, and I don't want to do that. So no. anyway, twenty two fifty five total gross sales. Uh, and you see the shipping there, eBay fees, Etsy fees, Poshmark fees, Macari fees, total costs. My cost of goods are low. Um, my cost of goods are always low because the majority of what I purchase does come from the bins, whether it's from here or from uh, bins elsewhere when I go and mm -hmm. source. So that part is always good. My total net sales, 1641. Again, I need to be at about 2,500 or more in my net every week. So yeah. my gross average sale price, you can see, has come down quite a bit. I do try to be between 50 and 60. It's just over $41 or just under whatever, under 43. And then my net average sale price, not a great week. Um, again, I feel like we're always complaining right lately because the numbers have just been so bad. Yeah. Uh, but the reality is, is, I know that we're not alone. I do know that most people are really hurting right now with their sales. There are very few categories that people have seen an increase in sales within the last six yeah. to nine months. So I totally understand that. Um, you know that I that I'm not alone. Um, I do know how to sell. I've been doing this for a very long time. I know what I sell is but it's still relevant. I'm not buying bad things. I don't want to hear the if you sell what people want, then they'd be buying it. Shut up. I think we should. I, I do think we should be like looking at ways to kind of switch things up and change things. For one thing, I think this week we, we should be making a real effort to like look like crazy. You have a bunch of hard goods that you mm -hmm. took a bazillion pictures of. Yeah. Um, that you get listed this week, and I do feel. Like you really start going back and doing more hard goods, it takes a week or two, and then all of a sudden you start having a lot of sales. No, rolling. it's true. I do see um, a, a definite increase when I have the mix, and the reality is because I did that buyout recently, plus the seven hundred plus pounds that I brought in from Colorado in January. Mm -hmm. I have listed nothing but clothing, yeah. uh, a handful of shoes thrown in there in the last three months. Yeah. So I do have a lot of hard goods now that I can get through. Uh, and and hopefully that'll help uh, flip on some other categories. Who knows? We'll see yeah, what happens. Let's, do, let's bust those out. I, I run the sales. I send the offers. I do the promoted listing. Yeah. It's, you know, and vintage has never been hotter than it is right now. It's for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. My sales have, have taken a beating as have other people. So I get that. And then, you know, we got married last year. We moved. We doubled our housing expenses. It's, you know, it's like it's a little like eh. I, just, I think we need to switch things up a little bit. I think we need to be listing more and sourcing more regularly. I got some ideas. Well, let's get through. Let's look at our sales highlights for the week, and then we can move on to the haul. And uh, I kind of have an idea. I have a challenge that he doesn't know about for her. And I'm gonna see. But we'll talk about it when we get to the next part. Yeah, we, guys, we don't. We 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 have. There's nothing we can do with the sound issue. We don't know if it's like a StreamYard or a YouTube thing because we don't have the problem on Zoom. Um, and it's, it's not, not the microphone. Not the microphone. So we, it is what it is. There's nothing we can really do about it right now. So we apologize if it's um, annoying, but it is it's not really. Anything about it's it. nothing we can so control. let's go ahead and we'll start with yours, Vicky. What's this? What do you got? What do you, what do you got here? Can you get the main photo and not a side photo? I don't know why you're on the last I photo. I have no idea. There you go. Uh, so this is something that I picked up at the bins. I've had it for quite a while now, maybe like six to eight months. I mean, this is kind of the epitome of ticky tacky and mock core, right? Granny core. So this I picked up at the bins. So I probably paid maybe a dollar for it. It has bows and appliques and, and ribbons and and beads and everything. somebody went crazy with it. 
Dazzler at Nana's house. Um, and it has stains. It's really clearly sold someone actually wore it. That is what it sold for. I paid maybe a dollar. Yeah. See, and we always sound good to Jill. This is like the second time people have been saying stuff about the sound. And then Jill says, it sounds great over here. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. But listen, I can't believe you sold that for that much when it's got like the, the big yellow stains right on the front of it. It, it looks like somebody's bedazzled quilting project. And I knew I knew it, it needs to be shaved. Something. Like, come on. That's well, terrible. I, that. That's I know that. you don't. It's you do that. Uh, yeah. $63 plus shipping on that. Hideous. That's hideous. crazy. All right. Tell us how much do they want to give you for the Red Wings boots? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Probably not much. Let us know. I don't know. $50. Yeah, I'm going to take that. They're listed for. They're listed for $63. Oh, yeah. That's a great offer. Plus shipping? Heck yeah. Look at that, guys. She's bringing the sales. Are coming Lord, in. I sold something. Right, look, we'll see if they pay, but I know, right? Hallelujah. All right. Next one for me. So, this isn't like any kind of like crazy, exciting sale, but I thought it was interesting. Um, it's pretty basic. It's literally is just a Canadian maple leaf. Uh, there is like a little hit on the sleeves. It's cross checker. That's the brand. What does that mean? Oh, the brand. I was the I thought that was a thing. No, I mean, it's like a, it's a hockey thing, though. Cross check. Um, so you can see the little hockey sticks and, uh, you can see the price I have it listed for, but somebody made an offer for $40 or I might've sent the offer. I think, I think they made the offer $40, but they're in the UK. And so because I do free shipping domestically, but charge for shipping internationally, normally I would want $50 for the shirt, but 40 to the UK was fantastic. But the crazy thing is they paid 40, then they paid, it was like $28 for shipping and then they paid like another $14 for the VAT fees or whatever that they have to pay. Because so, the UK, they, they have to recharge, like eBay charges them and then sends it off. Um, put those like, it was an old book. Shut up. <laughs> then take us on your journey, okay? Anyway, all in, they spent like $80 to get this t-shirt. It's nuts. Um, it's not even that expensive. So yeah, so I, I I think my shipping costs like fourteen dollars. I used uh, Pirate Ship, and um, so I made a little bit more money there. It's always you know good reasons to accept uh, international orders, offers, and stuff like that. Anyway, so that's all. But like, we had to pay like eighty dollars, guys. It's ridiculous mm -hmm. between shipping and that fee. So Crazy. I've seen a couple of comments in the chat about uh, it selling more volume at lower prices and things like that, and the cheap stuff is selling. You're absolutely right. Um, I do think people are definitely looking for a bargain. And don't get me wrong, even though I do have higher average sale prices, if I'm getting reasonable offers where I'm not losing money and it's not something fantastic that I'm really holding out money for, mm -hmm. I have been taking a lot of lowball offers and running very deep discounts in sales. Yeah. I'm running a 30% off sale in my store, store wide right now, plus sending offers of at least 20 to 30% on top of that. Yeah. So trust me, I'm not, yeah. you know. I, I, some people are pretty stubborn about their prices. I'm really not. I think about for you, prices. it's going to be about like getting to the bins more often, focusing a little bit more on some interesting mm -hmm. hard goods that you have. That, They're harder uh, to find. I know they are harder to find. That's why I'm more often. Um, so that you have a little bit more variety in, for yours. Uh, yeah. All right. What you got here? Oh, that. Why is that mine? Mine too. What do you mean? I just I did, the, oh, the you did the one. hockey thing. Okay. So this was actually given to me. Sometimes uh, people will give me stuff if they find it and they don't want to list it. This was given to me by our friend Dorothy. Wait, so you somebody gave this to you such as, as in a gift a year ago? See, I told you guys, she forgets about the good times. <laughs> this was given to me about a year ago. It's nothing I would have picked up myself, but because it was really well made and very well designed, um, I didn't have a problem listing that women's suits and women's blazers are probably the slowest moving category of anything that I sell. But this right here, you can see there were issues with it. It had a couple of moth holes. It had some staining. The staining will probably come out with a clean, with a clean. but the couple of moth holes, there's nothing you can really do about that. But it was very well made. So this actually sold for what you see there. This sold for sixty-two dollars and change plus um, plus shipping. Um, you know, I mean, it's a nicely made suit. I guess it, I wouldn't wear it, but that doesn't mean that somebody won't. Obviously, yeah. so. Greg says, I keep saying all reselling roads lead to a firmer. I mean, I know from we were having a conversation with Casey yesterday, Rockstar Flipper, and I'm, I'm not going to say what he's focusing on right now, but he's definitely looking at making a huge change in what he sells and potentially moving on to something that's going to be uh, 
something that takes up a lot less room, but you can have high, high, high volume. So I'm curious to see how that goes. Uh, but it's, it's sort of not quite a camera, but in the same I think it's like anything else. If you're going to sell a lot of lower cost, lower volume items, you have to have a huge inventory. And I do have a huge inventory, but it's a huge inventory of all higher priced items. Yeah. So yeah, I, you know, we got to do what we got to do. We got to change with the times when things change. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Next up. So I, the only reason I'm showing this is because first of all, I'm sure you guys noticed where it, like this picture is very dark. Um, the background's not gone. Uh, it's not an exciting sale. The only reason this is an exciting sale is because I sold it and I've had it for freaking ever guys. And I know I've had it forever, not only because of the quality of the picture, but also I can see this picture was taken in the basement where I had my photography, um, area set up in Oregon. Cause you can see that line, that, um, horizontal line going there. It's a crack in the cement wall. It's behind like the, behind your felt. Yeah, it's so because I had like a sheet hanging there. Um, anyway, so I've had this for a minimum of over five years, and you've lived here for more than almost five and a half years at this point. Yeah, I've had it for at least five and a half to six years, and it's just something that was in the closet. And I don't really, I don't, I still buy jackets, I just don't buy a lot of them, so it's real easy to just kind of forget about what I have in there. Um, so when something like this happens, I'm always excited because I'm like, I would have sold it for five dollars, <laughs> right? And I still got almost fifty dollars for it. I'm like, heck yeah! All right, very exciting. Good. Uh, this was one of my sales. You'll see that the photos are a little bit different. But this is one of my acquisitions from the um, the store that I purchased from my friend. Uh, so I imported all of her photos and all of her listings. All I did was tweak the titles, tweak the prices. I've probably sold about twenty items so far in the last two weeks. Um, and this one, uh, sold again for the price you see there, $62.97, which was the sale price. I did pay it, uh, under $3 for each of the items. And, uh, this was a cute one. A lot of them I have removed the background on, but her little background was so cute on some stuff. And I just, I just kept it. Um, yeah. Uh, Tommy in, uh, with that jacket, Windjammer, that was the name, uh, that was the, the, um, brand of the jacket, but yeah, it's similar to a windbreaker. It's just like a windjammer. It jams up that wind, right? No. <laughs> All right. It's a cute little jumper. Anyway, very cute. Uh, next up, this is another one that I picked up at yesterday's fits a couple of weeks ago when I bought a whole bunch of stuff out of a pile of uh, t-shirts that he said he, was, he would sell for five bucks. So, you know, I wouldn't have paid like a lot for this because it's, um, I mean, it's not like a single stitch. I think it's like Y2K. Um, but I like the graphic. It kind of looks like um, Van Gogh. Yeah, it's like Starry a, Night. Yeah, so it's kind of got a Van Gogh thing going on, but it says uh, Believe Area 51. So I was like, all right, I'll get it. So yeah, I don't think I would have paid more than $5 for it, but it's funny because then it sold within a couple of weeks of me listing it, and I sold for $50. So <laughs> I swear, whenever I get something where I'm like, yeah. I don't know why I bought this. I don't know if it's giving you a sell. I feel like those are the things that sell the fastest and I'm always surprised. And then there'll be something where I'm like, this is amazing. And I, I'm definitely going to sell this right away. And then it just sits. So I guess my instincts aren't always the strongest, but um, I still think it's a cool shirt and somebody else did too. And was willing to pay 50 bucks for it. So I can see somebody wearing that. Uh, these I did show on a haul probably uh, a few months ago. I think I might have even gotten these still in the summer. Uh, but I did buy these at the bins. Uh, they did take a while to sell. Actually, I'm surprised they didn't sell uh, early on. And they did only sell on this um, this sale for uh, $67.46. Sorry, guys. I did like a lot of things at 25 and 30% off. So all, all the numbers kind of look similar. Um, but these were a bins pickup, so I paid maybe a dollar for them. But these are the Y2K or the vintage 90s or Y2K Abercrombie cargo shorts that you want to look for. Now, cargo shorts, unfortunately, these ugly at mother effers will just not die and go away. But cargo shorts keep coming back, and they've come back with a vengeance lately, especially this last summer. You can carry um, so much stuff around with you. Oh my God, stop it. You start wearing cargo shorts and divorcing you. I have worn cargo shirts in the past, but I have no interest in wearing them now. Please, please, God, no. Um, anyway, specifically the camel ones and specifically the ones that have these little ties that yeah. hang down on the ends and they're a little bit longer. So, and then you've got your, your Abercrombie um, name, you know, the Abercrombie label is a little bit different than it is now. Made in Mexico, made in Bangladesh. That's what you're going to see a lot of. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, yeah, sorry. Oh. Um, 
keep an eye out for them is all I'm going to say. These are the kind of things that you're going to find at a garage sale. Some wife is finally going to get sick of her husband's college you know, cargo short collection. And you're going to find them in a garage sale. Um, so when you can find them, get them. Yep, yep. All right, next up, I've got, I, I haven't had this very long either. I've noticed that like a lot of my stuff does like I'll have stuff that sits forever, but then I'll have quite a few things that will sell within like a week of when I when I list them. This one made it like a couple of days, I think. This is that Soviet Union United States nuclear test t shirt. That was where they would like teamed up to test the soil joint verification experiment, in Nevada test site 1988. Weird. Um just I just think it's a little I love this kind of stuff because it's like kind of obscure, interesting little pieces of history. Um it was a cool shirt, but uh I think I think they sent the offer for $50 and I was like, whatever, I paid $10 for it. I might as well just, I'm just going to make some money on it real quick. Um, even though I had that price pretty high, but it's kind of, you know, one says where you never know, but I'll take 50 bucks for it. Sweet. Mm -hmm. You can see on the Haynes tag, 80s tag. There you go. Let's see Yuri in the chat. Yuri, Yuri! came from California and she came to our thrift with us and mm -hmm. she came to the meetup mm -hmm. with Liz perfectly and we got to meet her husband. It was so exciting. Um, Yuri, I hope you come back soon. Now yeah, that you know that it's not a super long drive, you can come back for, come for more meetups because it was great to hang out with yeah, you. Yeah, come hang out with us. Um, let's see. And I tend to agree with In It to Flip It. I have never seen anyone carry anything in all those pockets. Agreed. Unless it's somebody that has one of those huge I have. Rings. I'd put a wallet in there. I'd put my phone in. I'm thinking now. It's like you can put your phone in there. Yeah, no. You Still can, not wearing them. Whatever. I'm just saying. They're awfully convenient. Go ahead. Awfully convenient. <laughs> on here. Uh, so I have talked about these before. I will continue to talk about these whenever you see um, men's blazers that have a Western feel to them. Pioneer Wear, HRC. HRC is a high-end Western wear company. Um, there are certain brands that you're always going to want to pick up. Frontier Wear. Um, there are three or four brands, and then the brand doesn't even matter a heck of a lot. But those particular brands will get this, this particular tag right here. Mm -hmm. um, sells very well. So you're going to find these at the thrift stores. You're going to find them at the estate sales. You're going to find them at the bins occasionally, because I'm pretty sure this one came from the bins. Yeah. And most like the people at the bins and like the t-shirt bros and gonna, stuff, they don't want any blazers. No, they're not going to grab these. And I'm not saying every men's blazer, okay? Because not every men's blazer is worth it. But Western ones sell mm -hmm. faster and more frequently. I have probably a hundred percent sell through on Western style blazers. Sometimes yeah. it takes a while because you've got to wait for the right size for it to be the right person size, you know, because blazers are sized specifically. It's like a pair of jeans. It's not just yeah. small, medium, large. But I paid maybe two or three dollars from the bins and it sold for the price you see there, $105. Ridiculous. Um, and again, if I wasn't pushing for trying to get sales and, and you know, I probably would have sold it for more if I had waited it out. All right, next up. So oh, this is cool because this is so we went to the bins last Sunday just before we did this show, and then we went this Friday. Um, and I hadn't been to the bins in forever, and certainly not to like shop for myself or anything like that. And for those of you who've been around for a while, uh, I started out like the bins were like my number one source when I was living in Oregon. Um, I've just moved away from that because um, there I have so many options to buy from other sellers. But now that I'm trying to like be a little smarter with my sourcing because of how the market is and, and the economy, um, this is, the, I, I basically got like 10 things at the bins on Sunday. One thing it did well, I got them all photographed, went and listed them my, Sunday and Monday. I had everything listed by Monday, guys. I received an offer for this yesterday. This is the first, I think the first thing I've sold since uh, we went on Sunday. And I've got an offer for $62. It's not vintage. This is a dead stock, new with tags, uh, Rose Bowl game jacket. You can see it's, remember, if you remember last week, I was asking like what the V was and then you guys helped out, Georgia Bulldogs. Um, so yeah, not vintage at all. And I sold it for $62. And really I paid zero because Vicky paid for my stuff. Although I did buy whatever thing at it, goodwill. So whatever. But it would have been, it's very light. I don't even know if it's a pound. So what do they charge now for the pound? A dollar eighty-nine. So let's just say maybe two dollars. Sold it for sixty-two. Okay. In a couple of days. Yep. Sold it for sixty-two. Like how ridiculous is that? I really should be going to the bins. I don't know what's wrong with me. So all right. Uh so 
Kristen might actually recognize these. This did come from Colorado. These came from the Colorado bins. There was one day when we were at the Denver bins where they had bin after bin of stuff that actually must have come from a closed out, um, maybe like a sports recycled or a used sports sports mm -hmm. or a used sporting goods store or something like that. And I bought a bunch of stuff. These were the best of the best that I purchased. The very lightweight biking shorts. I paid maybe 50 cents to 75 cents for these. And I've had lots of offers and lots of views on them. Um, and they sold, again, for the price that you see there. Um, again, I, I probably paid less than a dollar for them. They sold for $125.97. Nice. Now, these are very expensive biker shorts. For the most part, you're going to get padded seat shorts, and they're not worth a ton. But there are certain brands that are worth more than others. Yeah. And this, cool. this is one of those good brands. Did I know that when I grabbed it? Absolutely not. I just knew there were bike shorts. And the only reason I knew that they were worth anything more than five, ten dollars is because all the price tags from the sporting goods store was still on them. And they had these priced at over a hundred dollars at a used sporting goods store. Oh. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna snag those. Uh and they they sold fairly quickly. They were maybe listed for a couple of weeks. Angel's calling us out for abusing mm -hmm, Ripley. Mm -hmm. Listen, guys, uh, I need to tell my side of the story because you need to defend your abuse because case. Angel is um, he's slandering he's, you right now. He's not telling you the full truth. What happened is when we let the dogs out into the backyard, Ripley likes to immediately start barking. Ripley's and she an gets asshole. real. She gets real naughty. Sometimes she won't, but sometimes she gets real naughty and she decides she has to run around to the side of the house so that she can scream at anyone who dares walk by. And any um, leaf that dares to blow down the yes. street, any car that drives by, and any person mm -hmm. that might be breathing in their own yard yes. seven houses away. So she was being super naughty, and I didn't feel like the other two dogs needed to be punished for her bad behavior. So I brought her back into the house while the other two got to continue to bask in the sunshine. And I did post a picture of her looking really sad and pathetic, sitting and looking out the window, wishing she was also having fun. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? As my mother says, that's what she gets. So... Uh, I'm sorry. And Angel says that it's dog abuse. <laughs> well, because it really, ultimately, his goal is to try and steal her from us. So mm -hmm. he's trying to find any way possible, uh, even if it's besmirching our good names. Besmirching? Um, yes. Oh, that was good. That was Indeed. a good word. Anyway. All right. Next up, I have, you guys know I love my surfer tees, and this is a cool one. It's a long sleeve one. Um, these shirts always sell, guys. Sometimes they take a little bit longer, but I always sell them for a decent price. And it doesn't matter what the what the brand is. It's just all about kind of this cool um, design. It's, they're usually like like a stripe geometric kind of combo Paper going waves. on. Um, and so and, and this one I sold for the price you see there. It's sixty nine ninety nine. Um, I paid like ten bucks for it. And it sold for seventy dollars. Again, it does not matter what what the brand is. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some brands where it'll help because we have the logo on them, but in this case, didn't matter. Still sold it for $70 and I paid maybe 10 bucks for it. So pretty good. Deal. Mm -hmm. All right. Next mm -hmm. up for you. This one might've come from you. I'm not entirely really sure, uh, but I do. I love hard rock cafe stuff. I don't really know why I love hard rock cafe stuff. It's really not worth a lot. I just want to show it showed, you know, it sold for Forty-nine. It sold for only forty dollars. It's, it's faded. It's stretched out. They are a dime a dozen. Hard Rock Cafe stuff is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, why this actually? Why I like it so much? I have no idea. However, I do. So you're um, saying that I gifted this to you? You may have. Greg has actually <laughs> gifted me Hard Rock Cafe stuff too. It could have. Huh. This could have been. That's they all look the same. You just can't really. I can't remember what uh, area they all came from. That sounds like a lot of gifts. Um, but this. It's sold for 40 bucks. I just want to say, like, price your stuff according to what you feel it's worth. That was what I wanted to say. If you look for Hard Rock Cafe t-shirts, there are probably thousands and thousands of them. And there are people that sell them as low as $5 or oh, yeah. $10. And they sit there. But you know what? When they're vintage, or if it's got a great color well, play it was on interesting. it. Like, it's Beijing. Like You're not going to find Beijing right. ones all over right. the place here. So go ahead and price your stuff at a normal price. Is it, It's gonna, not going to sell for $100. But... So there you go. And I'm pretty sure I shipped this one international, which is that meant they paid for shipping as well. Mm. So yep. 
All right, next up, I had uh, a guy who wanted to buy a couple of shirts for me and so wanted me to work with him on the pricing. And he actually bought two Syracuse Orange t-shirts. Um, and see, this this one was on sale for $139.99, but I sold it to him for $90. Um, and then this t-shirt was $69.99. I sold it to him for $45. So basically, I made $1. 35, 135 for these two shirts together. Um, and I probably paid like maybe 10, 15 bucks for this one. And then uh, maybe like 30 bucks for this one. Um, so it was a pretty good deal. And it makes it a lot easier when I can ship them out together. I think together they were just under a pound. So they still went first class. Um, so yeah, I'm always happy to bundle stuff up for a, little, a bit of a discount. So mm -hmm. and make a little bit more money. I think it's going to get interesting what we show, uh, you know, I just wanted to say real quick. Now, there is a an email that those of you that sell on Etsy probably received over the last week or two, or maybe not all of you, but some of you received. Etsy is about to roll out some beta testing with making offers. Um, this is something that they've never had before. Occasionally, yeah. people would make you offers through messages, and then you had to adjust the price, and then you had to do math backwards if you actually had a sale running in your store. So they didn't make it very easy for people to offer, um, off, make offers. Now, is this a good thing? Are we going to get a million low ballers like on eBay now I, or on Poshmark? I don't know. I don't um, that hasn't been the case on, on Etsy up till now. But I will say I'm pretty happy that they're allowing this because it is better for people to have the option to be like, oh, I really like this, but it's a little too high price-wise. And if they have the ability to make offers, I'm I, surely will totally sell it down. for lower because my prices are lower on every other platform. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see if that draws anything, um, yeah. you know, draws more eyeballs to our closets. If you got an email from Etsy about it, you need, if you want to be part of the testing period, you have, opt in. you have to opt in now. You have until April 5th. April 5th is when it's going to go into effect. But once it goes into effect, you will no longer have an opportunity to opt in. You won't be able to change your settings. And you won't be able to opt in until it's open for everyone. Right, exactly. I'm looking forward to it because here's the thing. Let's say I have a t-shirt and I'll take a t-shirt. I'll list it on eBay for $99.99. But then I'm always running a 30% off sale. So really my price on there is $69.99. But it's open to offers. And I know that for the most part, I'm willing to go as low as $50. That's how I kind of price. Like I know mm -hmm. I'd sell it for 50, but I'm going to start it at 69.99 so I can send out aggressive offers to the buyers so that I can entertain offers from other people. Um, so then when I list that at the same time, when I list that on Etsy, I will price it at 69.99. So it's 69.99 on sale on eBay, regular price 69.99 on Etsy. And then I do a monthly sale on Etsy that's 10% off. So that $69.99 t-shirt's now $62.99. But again, like I said, I'm willing to take $50 for that shirt, but because there's no offer system set up on, on Etsy, I generally don't bother with it. Most people don't ask you to give them a lower price. And Etsy does still have lower fees than eBay. They do. Somewhat. It's still um, 8% plus the transaction I mean, they do fee. have that whole offer. Whatever. They, there's other ways that they get you, guys. But... I'm happy to try it. If somebody wants to offer me $50 on a t-shirt, I'd probably get $62.99 for on Etsy. I don't care. I just want to sell stuff. I want to make more money. So I'll do what I got to do. Right. And then we've got Susie there in it. Just a bit. What, <clears throat> what an online auction platform that can accept offers and add immediate payments all at once. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. eBay. Rail does it. it. Step your shit up. eBay. Stop with me. Promises and promises and promises. Uh, we heard today from a reputable source, we won't say who, that they are purposely not giving us immediate pay required in actuality. Um, who knows when that's going to happen? They've been promising it for like almost three years now. And sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, but it's really, really frustrating. But Mercari, you uh, offers an immediate pay at the same time. Grailed offers immediate pay at the same time. Poshmark. Poshmark Every offers the immediate pay at the same time. It's really, really frustrating. Um, and I hate it when my stuff gets tied up and I and I lose those watchers and I lose it's just it's annoying. It's okay. annoying. So uh Hold let's on. back to Hold me. please. Hold please. Go ahead. This was a Poshmark sale, and this was actually my only decent Poshmark sale all week. This was a pickup. 
Um, I, I'm not sure how long I've had it or when I picked it up, but this was a bins pickup. So it is heavy. It's one of those really heavy, uh, thick motorcycle jackets. It probably did cost me maybe $10 at the bins, uh, depending on what state I got it in. I can't remember if I got this in Colorado or here. It's been at that point now, guys. I have no idea that you're getting old. Yeah, I'm getting old. I don't remember where shit comes from. But the most I paid for it, for it was ten dollars because I know that I I did purchase it at the bins because this would have been thirty or forty dollars at a thrift store um, to purchase for resale. So uh, it sold sold for a uh, hundred and fifty dollars. I already got my five star review on it. What? So, um, I was pretty excited about that. Um, I always pick up these types. I'm looking at the jacket. The brand is irrelevant. There are certain brands that are fancy, of course, that will add value, but if it doesn't have a name brand, it does not detract really from the value. It does not matter. It's all about the style, the look. It's about the style, the look, the whole- The wear. Yep, the wear. The more broken in, the better. Yeah, when it comes um, to the style, Because this type of jacket is super stiff and heavy when you first get them, and uh, nobody wants to look like the guy that just bought the motorcycle to wear on the weekends and right. he's an accountant by day. Nobody wants that look. So they like the broken in, broken down um, jackets. They wear well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 150 bucks. I paid like 10. Woo! Woo! Next. Woo! All right. Uh, the New York Rangers t-shirt. I actually got this off of whatnot. I don't remember exactly how much I paid. I think I paid like 75. Um, I remember I was very disappointed because when I got it, and it happened with a lot of wear and some staining that I was not happy about. Um, and this big fade line going across the chest. Let's see if you can see it. There you oh, go. Man. Right there. But it was also stained there. So I that. did lot. Yeah. I did lots of soaking and lots of bleaching. And they didn't disclose that on the No, they did not. And I couldn't. It, 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 was so shitty sellers. Yeah, it was, yeah, I was definitely super irritated. But um, it was a bigger seller. I can't remember what their name was now, but whatever. Anyway. Uh, but I sold it. Somebody made an offer for one thirty, so I did make a little bit of money on it. Um, and I think I represented it much better on here, showing exactly what the condition is. And um, anyway, I uh, sold it for one thirty, so I was happy to have it out of the house and behind me because I was very angry. What did you do for it? Uh, I'm not like seventy five. That's because it's an all over New York Rangers T-shirt. Like a lot of the. A lot of like the really cool sports t-shirts and all over prints like that. It's all NBA and NFL. So when I find the really cool and it's hockey, there's just not as much of it out there. No, you're right. And so there's I was not just, a lot of Rangers gear out there in general. Considering yeah. It's a New York team and the uh, East Coast teams are very heavily represented. I want to be a New York Ranger. I want to live a life of danger. That's not the song. Um, it is a song. It was a song that the Misfits did for them. And then they decided not to use it. It sounded like hockey was dangerous. So there, Michael Graves recorded it. I have it on CD. I'll play it for you sometime. I, I realized that, that that's not, it was it's not like it's an original song. No, they <laughs> they recorded the song for the freaking NHL team. And then the NHL team decided to pass because it made it sound like it was dangerous. Because they don't want people thinking it's dangerous. Like hockey. They're living a life of danger. I'm pretty sure all the guys were missing teeth. Well, I get it. It's a call the PR thing. Jeez. Don't you guys, I'm sure some of you guys out there that pay attention to sports, you know the guy that like his throat got split. He was the the goalie, I think. And there was a, an accident and he got <laughs> and almost bled out on the, uh, on the ice. He skated off real fast. He had two different options and he just picked one. And luckily the, the way that he went, there was a medic there that was able to, otherwise he would have died. It's so crazy. It's how they wear like um, the neck guards. 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 Yeah. Very dangerous. Yep, it happens. One, one idiot. One idiot. And they've got to change the rules for everybody. Well, it's not an idiot. It's a it's a very uh it's just a very physical sport. I mean, whatever. Anyway, um we so we're gonna do our haul. So like I said, uh we went well, I went to yesterday's fitness earlier this week. I don't remember what Tuesday. I went on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. and I'm Jesse. Told he let me know that he had just gotten in three boxes of stuff from Denver. So he, I was like, "All right, I'm going to go ahead and come in now before all uh, you know all those perfectly people and Trish and Teresa show up, and I'm not going to have an opportunity to." So I went and bought some stuff from from there. Not a ton, but I got some cool stuff. And then Friday we went to the bins, mm -hmm. right? And then yesterday, um, on so on Friday, I got a text from Jesse saying, hey, I need to clear out a bunch of my eBay stuff. 
I'm going to be pulling a bunch of it and making like five, ten, twenty dollar piles. Uh, but you got first dibs if you want to come in and shop it real quick. And I was like, yes. And so we actually took along all the the most perfectly people. Took Christian, and Teresa, and you. And we all did a little field trip to yesterday's fits. And we got to go back into the super stash area um, next the door. The secret stash area that only Katie and I are actually allowed to shop. I'm sure other people, I'm pretty, Britt's here. I'm sure Britt's been back there. I don't think it's quite, I don't know. as much as I'd like to pretend like I'm not special. Um, although I very often do get the first chance. I will say that, uh, but I'm sure Britt's been over there. Um, anyway, they have, it's, a, it's not for, um, but we found some really cool stuff. You got some good stuff. I got some good stuff. And then Teresa let me sneakily bought me something out of Jesse's inventory and gave it to me today that was very exciting, you guys. Very But exciting. I'm telling you, the last, the two times I've gone to the bins this last week, I've, both times I've gotten some cool stuff. I kind of want to start doing it more often. Lee, here's a challenge for you. I have a challenge. You can choose to accept it or you can tell me it's dumb. And all these people are my witness now, so they're going to judge you for your answer. What do you think about for a little challenge just for this next week? What do you think about us going five times before our next show? So we didn't go tomorrow because tomorrow we have to do our Monday shipping. What if we went? It's not like I have a lot to ship. Okay, well, whatever. But we want to go when they open. What do you think about going Tuesday through Saturday? We'll go first. We only have to be there for an hour, hour and a half each day. And then next Sunday, we'll report back and we'll show everybody the best things that we've done in a week of hitting it hard at the bins. All right. What do you think? All right. What do you guys think? Do you want to see that? You want to see what, what we can do five days in a row at the bins? I think it'd be really interesting. Because not every day is a home run, but you never know. I feel like five days, we got to find something really good. All right. Five right. days, two rotations, though. That's it. Because it takes too damn long. Okay. Five days, two rotations. Unless we're really just having a great time. Okay. We can play a bear. Okay, guys. Next Sunday, we're gonna, our haul is just going to be stuff that we source at the bins. We're going to hit it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All right? Boy. I'll get you coffee. You better get me coffee. I'll get you coffee. All right. We're going to do it, guys. Okay. So let's see. Why don't you go ahead and start and you can show us what you got. Let us know where you got it, obviously. All right. So I'll start with my stuff from uh, yesterday's fit. Uh, there are certain things that Jesse knows that I love and he'll sometimes contact me. I also send stuff in with maybe sometimes to give to him. This is what we do in this posting community, right? We kind of like, even when we were at the bins the other day, I was like pulling stuff out. And I'm like, you, so-and-so, you sell this. Why don't you take this? You, you type this. I gave a couple of things to, to Carrie because Carrie's been doing some some plush uh, whatnot shows over at Yesterday's Fits actually with Jesse. And so um, I, you know, Je Jesse kind of knows what I like, but I do like a lot of the same stuff as Katie too. So obviously that's Katie's source and she gets the majority of her items here. But every once in a while, he gives me some stuff that he thinks I'll like too. So, oh, but real quick, he basically had pulled a bunch of stuff and he said all the things on these, he had like three racks in a big pile, all of it $10 a piece. And then he had a separate section that was like stuff that was still up on eBay that he was willing, if he wanted it to get for like 50% of whatever he had it listed for. Mm -hmm, so, that's I true. think everything you got was $10 stuff mostly. No, there was no. one thing. There was one thing. No, I got there. three $10 items and one very expensive yes. item. Yes. Okay. All right. So, this is one of my $10 items. This is a vintage 1950s uh, Letterman sweater. It is a women's. So, it's not going to sell quite as much as it would for a man's size or man's sweater. Apparently, it was Ellen's. She was a Ellen, band. Ellen was, was varsity band, nice wool Coleman Mills sweater. Uh, but this is an older tag, right? So it's about fifties right there, maybe early sixties, but first glance before I look it up is fifties. Mm -hmm. I will list this for probably a hundred and change and then sell it for anything over 75. Um, I have another one. This one is a men's. And this is also from the 50s. Um, this one has a girl's name on it too, Cindy sewn into oh. it. However, this is um actually nope, this is women's as well. Sorry. This is Cindy's. Cindy, uh, apparently, oh, this is just gonna, this is pinned on. So this tag is much older than this, but it's pinned on like it's the year is 75. 
Um, but it's not sewn on. And part of me thinks that this might be switched. It should be 57. Um, that could also be their number. Could have been the number too. It's not necessarily the graduation year. My basketball jacket has a five on it because I was number five. So this person played uh, played basketball and did um, track because it's like the track things, but there's also the anyway. It's pretty cool. Paid ten dollars again. Same thing. I think I'll list it for about seventy five. This is one of those nice big thick wool Letterman sweaters. There's no uh, moth holes, which is good. Usually there's a lot of moth. Uh, let's see, I paid $10 for this as well. This is 90s or early Y2K Juicy Couture. Juicy. Juicy. We all have talked about this before. Juicy is back. You can find Juicy Couture, buy it, especially the velour jumpsuits, track suits, the jackets, the, the you know, the the track pants that have juice written across the ass. Those are those are back. So that's what this is. This is just the jacket. Um, it's got like glitter, it's like it is as orange as it looks. This is like Halloween orange and black. You're going to look like a juicy ass pumpkin. But this one just has uh, glitter and then the name on the like juicy on the hood, velour, and then the little JC embroidered. Paid $10. This is probably a $50 nice. sweatshirt. All right, let's see. And <laughs> Susie says, I like it, but I think come Friday, Vicky is out. Yeah, I might be. We'll see. I'll go by myself. Um, this I bought from Jesse. Jesse was not sure that this is real. I'm like 99% sure that it's real. I'll do a little bit more research um, on it and then uh, report back. I do know that he'll give me my money back if it's fake. So I felt okay purchasing it. I, I paid $100 for this. But this is. And she um, also crushed a man's dream. One of his friends was there and he really wanted it because Vicky offered 50. And Missy said, I can't give it to you for 50. This guy would, would buy it so that he could wear it himself. And then she looked at him and then she went, I'll give you a hundred. And then he started, there was like a single tear that rolled down his cheek. She, she's so drama. <laughs> so this is actually men's. This is a men's heavy wool uh, like jacket um, in this great blue plaid. And it has these heavy uh, leather woven buttons. Um, this is vintage. It's not super old vintage, though. Even though those buttons generally indicate 70s, that's not 70s. This is just like, um, but it's it's Saint Laurent. Uh, so Yves Saint Laurent, made in Paris. Um, nothing wrong with it. I paid $100 for it. I do think I can get about three to $400. Um, yeah, so... There's some inner tags to look at. Cool. Um, so that was my my one extravagant buy for me. I know. You totally pay. blew Tommy's mind. Let me tell you, though, she was ready to pay $100 for uh, Jesse had this amazing Woolrich hunting. It was like a hunting jacket. It was like red. But then it had these awesome, I don't know if they were solid. It was red plaid. And then they had like these red uh, patches here. They had matching pants. It was a whole hunting and outfit. I, I was gonna. I wanted to buy the jacket, but then I, he said they came together and he won a hundred dollars for them. And Teresa, this is why I named this one Source of Smackdown because there was some. She, she, she joined it. In and she by, joined I it. will say though, the jacket had like a big spot. You can't really see the spot, but it was super stiff and crusty. And he said it that could was be the from, pants. No, it was a jacket. Though. And so I think that would have made it a little bit harder to sell it for as much as you want to get for it. But um, anyway, it's like a big crusty, could be blood. We don't know what hard spot on it. It was hunting. It I know. Been I'm animal aware. blood. I'm aware. But it anyway. Been like dead deer or something. So there there was some there was some fighting. Ter Teresa won out. Teresa, around. she yoinked it right out. From the I'll take it. I was like, I, yeah. And I will tell you that you know that it, well, I know. You may not know this. This will sit in Teresa's house for about two years because she hates listing thrifted stuff or vintage stuff because yeah, eventually it's she'll just harder to source. And then she'll either let me buy it from her for a hundred or she'll be contacting us in like 18 months going, what do I call this again? What do I price this? Where do I put it? Because she doesn't, she wants to be, she gets excited and wants to be in it. And, you know, but then she, she hates yeah. She likes supporting Jesse too. She likes supporting the guys he has to use, but she's already working on uh, doing another big shoe buy from them. But when she's in the moment, she gets real excited and wants to buy a lot of stuff. Cracks me up. She's funny. All right. So this I got from the bins. This is just a um, Folk Manus puppet. It's a pretty popular brand of puppets. He's so cute, but he's a big green pterodactyl. 
He's very pterodactyl. I just thought he was kind of cute. He's real cute. Um, I generally sell these puppets for like $40 to $50. I'm not sure if this is a super desirable animal or not. But I would hope so. Look how cool he is. It's pretty cool. He's got the arms. He's got his little mouth. He's got the beak. Out with his pointy wing. But anyway, I paid a dollar. I'll probably sell it for at least 40 to 50 bucks. Maybe more. I might surprise you. Greg says that hunting outfit's Dick Cheney hunting partner for. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, I got this really fancy hat at the bins. It's a I little get, too fancy. I have sprayed the inside of this. Just so you guys know, I did spray sanitizer and everything all over this so that I can do this. But um, Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I won't sing the whole song, although I we did sing it already yeah. in the house. It's got feathers. second verse, same as the first. Anyway. I'm very excited about uh, my King Henry VIII hat. It's really well made, but it's definitely a great for a costume or for Ren yeah. Fair or anything like that. I think I'm going to price this pretty high because it's really nice. It's real made. fancy, it has guys. This huge feather, uh, feather plume on it. So maybe like 75 bucks. It's like this it's deep burgundy. And yeah, it's really cool. Not any type of name brand. Um, so it's not something I could easily comp. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Katie found this one for me, I think. Would you say I gifted that to you? No, I would not say that. So shut up. <laughs> I found this at the bins. So Rising International, this is a brand I always pick up. It always sells. This is like festival wear, oh, right? Look how cute it is. So it's got the rainbow. Is, yeah, it's got the name tag. It's got the tags on and everything. This is festival wear. They make jackets, sweatshirts, bags. Um, you're going to find these at every uh, booth when you go to some type of festival or fair or uh, any type of place that has vendors selling. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those. I don't think you can buy Rising International off of an actual web website. It just yeah. always comes from. Greg, yeah, the hat was from the bins. And I sprayed it. You heard me say it. Yeah. Or I, was, sure. I, didn't, I didn't want to get the lice. So that sweatshirt, maybe like 40, 45 bucks. It's not a ton of money, but I mean, easy money. This, uh, I'm going to sell this probably for scrap. This is not, not the bins. this is from the bins. This is a vintage plaid wool blanket. Uh, it is not Pendleton that I'm aware of. Oh, no, it does have a tag on it somewhere. Hold on. It what's is vintage. Um, hold on, I just got to find the tag because I had seen it at the bins. Oh. So vintage, maybe 60s. Um, made in England. Made in England. Authentic tartan plaid. Ooh, why do you sell for scraps? Because it has so many holes in Does it. Does it? Where? Yeah, it's really, really mossy. Um, see, I can put this up and you can see me through it probably. Yeah. Uh, here's, a, here's a hot tip, you guys. Anytime you buy wool like Pendleton or a blanket like this, hold it up to a window, the sunlight. You can do this in a, in a store, too, if you can see like the, the windows from the front. Hold it up, and any if there's any holes that normally would be totally hidden, they'll pop. Yeah. So I mean, that's a really if this were, if that were Pendleton or if that didn't have the holes, I would probably sell it for a hundred, hundred and fifty. Uh, because it has the holes, I still think I can get fifty bucks for it as a scrap, um, or as a decor piece because it's a really nice vintage wool. I mean, it's yeah, great for like man cave type of decor. So, all right, all right, Jill. Shut your pie hole, Jill. Do not give Jill, Katie Jill any says, ideas. It's not quite the right style, but I but I dig what you're thinking, Jill. Jill says the hat would be great for our life size portrait uh, in the Alcon Green Room. Jill, you are one smart lady. It was very nice seeing you this weekend. Bite your tongue, Jill. <laughs> We're no longer friends. What? How dare you? Um. Okay. Bins. Bins. Fine. Uh. Big, huge, multi-layer petticoat. It's in burgundy. I think this is like a five layer. It's cute. The more the layers, the more money. This Ooh. is for an adult. Uh, so this is either going to be for uh, very small costume pinup or um, like square dancing costumes, that kind of thing. This is one of the older vintage ones because one of the things that you can see is that it has a tied waist. So it's an adjustable waist that does tie with a string. Um, I didn't see the tags, but I didn't cute. look too hard yet. I like that it's like the dark color that it has the the white. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, these do sell. They always sell uh, because they definitely have uh, lots of like cheap China repro versions mm -hmm. for pinup wear. But um, people that genuinely like to dress in vintage clothing do like to 
their authentic vintage pieces. So um, the color is a little less popular, but it's also not common. So I'm not too sure where I'm going to price it, but it, I mean, at least 50, at least 50. And this weighs between one and two pounds. They're just big and bulky. I say 75. It's big and bulky, but it's not heavy. Um, it is a pain to store them, I will say, because they do take up a lot of space. A lot of space. Let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, phone. All right, this was kind of cool. Katie, can you help me hold this one up? Yeah. She found this for me too. Again, I don't know if this is worth anything. It would be worth more if it actually had a casino name on it. But I this feel is, like when it comes to it has wins, a tag on it. It's got to be worth enough. Well, it has a tag on it, and it's sold. Uh, it probably was sold at one of the casino stores in Las Vegas. I know, shocking. Uh, that people can buy their own stuff for their home. So this is a craps table. Um, it's like it's the new. felt for the craps table. It's brand new. It's the whole thing that you would replace if you need to replace the felt. People re they replace the felt on their at home things and stuff like that. I have not looked this up at all yet. Um, it's regulation size craps table. I mean, unfortunately, in Vegas, the bins they don't have sort of pricing for linens. When you go to Colorado, linens are what nine inches. 49 cents. 49 cents a pound uh in vegas um you do have to pay this the full price so um yes man cave core for mm -hmm. sure um i don't know what i'll price that out i haven't done any research at all Let but i was this. i, I just so. felt like you're paying five bucks you can't tell me you can't sell oh, no, for 40, sure for 40 dollars at least if not a lot more so no there's no casino name on it greg we were we were hoping there was yeah vicky knew that if there was a casino name on it more valuable, but you know. Um, I did find this at the bins. This is a vintage 80s uh, Western type of rodeo where it's flipping hideous. In the stream, flipping hideous. We are. Made by Kenny Rogers. That's why I was singing didn't, the song. Didn't know that Kenny Rogers had a clothing line, but clearly he did in the 80s. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very like Gunny Sacks, Jessica's, uh, Jessica's Bunny Sacks meets. A radio wear 80s meet some old bearded dude yeah so 50 bucks 75 bucks in, the, in that realm i'm gonna keep going i only have a few more do it do it same bin sure came from the same person's closet is another vintage 80s rodeo western wear shirt with a doily uh it's got like a doily collar yes what is going on it has like a doily collar and uh, a doily trim uh and it this one does actually have some water mark staining on it so mm -hmm. i better wash it but it has the, you know the pearl snap front uh chris not quite at the end but we've got another you're gonna see my you're getting you to, get you're to at the end of vicky's uh, stuff but i actually have stuff that's not t-shirts because we have been sourcing um i haven't looked this up either it's yet cool, this is a vintage um uh, messenger bag harris tweed messenger bag harris tweed is a really well-made uh tweed a lot of suits like blazers like and suits and stuff um 80s to 90s i'm not entirely it's sure based on the yeah, I don't know that it's I don't know that it's super old. The tag is old, um, but it's still a company that exists. So, yes, we've moved on to the horrible core. <laughs> uh, let's see what else is there. I'm just gonna do just a few more, and then you you can you can have it. I, I did do pretty well. I mean, and this is all stuff that I got at the bins while you guys were all shopping too, and I did not. I didn't shove. I didn't push anybody. I was waiting until everybody had gone through their bins that they wanted. Um, I got this vintage 80s, maybe even early 90s, uh, closed Stardust Casino jacket. Uh, it's white. It's this crinkly, lightweight fabric with this bright teal. Um, kind of like a bomber jacket, but it's not mm -hmm. a satin bomber. And the back is blank, unfortunately. If the back had like a really cool design or embroidered design, it would have been worth more. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is probably, you know, $50, $75. Let's see. Um, okay, so this is not vintage, nor is it, I don't know that it's anything special. There's no tags on it. I'm definitely selling it based on the aesthetic, not on the brand. 
It's not super cheap. It feels not too nice to be a costume because it's lined and it's made really well. But this is a long, it has tails. It's like a Ren Fair velvet blazer Fancy. jacket. It's embroidered. This is navy blue. Maybe whoever buys the hat will want this too. I don't think that's the hat. I didn't say that, but they would belong to the same kind of person. And it's got kind of like a damask trim with, with silver. Um, and this is all heavily embroidered. It's all this is all velvet, and it's got like the long sleeve, and then it has tail on the back, and these big buttons on the black in the front, big silver buttons. It's not super heavy, so it probably wouldn't have been very expensive, but um, yeah, it's definitely a step up from costume. So maybe it was sold by like a Ren company yeah. or something. It doesn't have any tags other than something that says size L. So let's oh, do a little. Liz wants little to know in. what she missed. And Liz, you missed. Um, I just challenged Vicky to, uh, we're going to basically this week, before next Sunday show, we're going to hit the bins five days in a row. We're not going to do it tomorrow because tomorrow's Monday. We got um, shipping to do in the morning. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we are going to go to the bins first thing in the morning, stay there for like an hour, hour and a half, just two rotations. And then next Sunday, we're going to come back and uh, show the best of what we found. Now, somebody thinks that Vicky's going to be out by Friday. So here's the thing. I'm going to go every day. Vicky says she'll go every day, but if there's a day she doesn't want to do it, then I'm going without her. So we're going to see what happens. I have FOMO, so you know she won't go without me. Well, I will. But I mean, you know, you'll, you'll no, be running I'm out going. after me. Yeah. <laughs> for me um okay i grabbed this and this is actually from patty i was gonna say uh in the chat. um patty found this and she's like would this be something you sell because she doesn't really source to resell she creates things she does she makes these she has these great earrings that she sells on whatnot and she is super creative and makes all these fun funky things with like denim jackets and mm -hmm. jeans and all that kind of stuff so um she just came for the fun and to hang out and i think she grabbed a little basket full of some crafty things that she thought she could turn into crafts from the bottom of the bins. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. So she found this for me. This is a latch hook of, of course, this is Molly Hobby from the 70s. It's got a little wooden hanging area. Um, I just, it's cute. Very it's a cute. thing. It was probably three, four bucks. Uh, somebody going with the retro 70s look, it's definitely going to enjoy that. I'll probably sell it for 50 because it is completed. And then, Let's see. I don't know if this. I think this might have been from. Um, from is this from her too? This might have been from Patty too. Know. Um. But somebody found me some vintage. If it wasn't you, Patty, and whoever it was is in this chat, please remind me who gave these to me. I'm sorry. Uh, when we were at this at the bins, these are some vintage Chinese toddler slippers. I was going to say why? Why do those baby slippers have cloven hoofs? Um, because it was a it's sort of the traditional. Oh well, no, I totally understand that now. When I first looked at it, I was like, I don't understand so why. Got, it's got the, yeah, but now so that makes sense. It's just oh, it was you okay? These did come from Patty too. Um, and they just got these little they're felt or they're velvet and they've got these little metal hooks on the inside they're and that would cute. be how they would attach. Um, which is traditional. They're cute. They were now, a do they wear do they wear the sandals over these? No. These are the shoes. These, but this is for a baby that probably isn't even walking yet. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, again, I don't know what the value is on these. I haven't really looked anything up yet. Oh, you can wear them with your sandals. Right. That's part of it. No, too. that's why it makes sense. Yeah. So um, I'm going to look them up and see if they have any value by themselves. Even if they don't, they're super cute. So, I mean, we get them from the landfill. I love yeah. traditional uh, wear, garb, traditional garb, uh, international garb. I think it's really cool. So. And I like looking stuff up like that because it gives me a chance to learn more about a different culture too. Um, uh, this was one of my finds that Katie missed, that everybody at the bins <laughs> missed, that the t-shirt bros missed. Did I, sorry, did I miss it or did I just not see it? It was the same. Well, a lot of the stuff that you're going to show, I thought I tossed back <coughs> and sorry. it was in that bin. So I must have gotten, gotten to it first. Maybe. Uh, but the t-shirt bros mm. tossed this back. So this is a vintage all over print. Yeah, the crazy um, basketball, right? Print ba basketball, yep. Yeah. Number 23 on the back. Which 23 is Michael Jordan? That's not Michael Jordan. I don't know. No, no. I mean, somebody will know who that is. 
Um, it might not be any. It might not be anybody. It might be just a random thing. But made in the USA. Super Team Sports is the tag. Um, <clears throat> good size, all over print. It does have some staining, but this is going to be one of those items that I'm going to throw in the bleach. It's Katie's stuff. Katie's going to throw in the bleach with her stuff. Uh, and these are the type that you can bleach this, and the things will come out, but everything else will stay. Yeah. It doesn't take the Dom color out. Dominic Wil Wilkins. <clears throat> Dominic Wilkins. All right. Thanks, Greg. I'm like, write that down somewhere because I'm not going to remember that shit. Well, do you have something to write on? Um, right there. Open that up. So that was pretty cool. I don't know what I'm going to pay, what I'm going to list it at, but I'll list it at something. I don't know, Katie, what would you list that at if it were yours? If, if I got the scenes out, probably 100. All right. You can fill this at 100. And but I also would take six. I know you, I know you like to pride yourself on like not looking up comps. I would look that up because well, something be, like that I would look up because that might be a dream team t shirt. I don't know. Something like that I would look up. Only I don't say I pride myself on looking up comps. It's just most of my stuff is not mm. So, uh, and then I grabbed this. This is just a vintage, um, like 60s, 70s kind of picnic blanket. It's cute. Uh, sometimes people would put these on tables. This would be like either a tablecloth or a slash a picnic blanket. It's just really, it's got the, the fringe on the side and it's strawberries. It's really cute. I like it. So, here we go. I've got a few other things, but that's the majority of the good stuff. Done. Yeah, and that's the stuff. I mean, that's just, that's the that's like seventy five percent of the guys, stuff. There's that I got. so much. Like, there were so many treasures. treasures. There's so many treasures at the bins. But yes, it's definitely uh, like I'm not somebody who wants to go and like fight people for stuff necessarily. You know, Shelly had sent me a link to this uh, this estate sale that was happening in San Jose. And they said they had thousands of vintage t-shirts and they show these pictures, all the vintage t-shirts. And I'm like, okay, you'd have to go there, get their hours beforehand. Uh, hopefully get a good spot in line because whoever's going to be first in line, the first few people in line are going to get all those t-shirts. And that's like great. So much anxiety for me. So the, the bits are different because it's because you really have to dig. And so it's very easy. Even if you are not like fighting everybody and racing in there, the way that they operate, they all hang out and they wait for them to like all the bins to be in place. And then they say, we can go. They all like they call it piranhas. They like jump on it like piranhas. But oh, it's asses to elbows. They're elbows. very, very surface. Very surface at first, especially. So at first, it's like they, these guys go and they just kind of go like this. And it's like they're looking to see if they see something for a split second that's good so they can grab it. But then they move on. So even if you go with those guys, but you take your time and like, go to one bin, there's always a chance that that's going to be the bin that has the good shit in it, right? And that's how I ended up with a couple of things um, before they even had a chance to look. So you can't, don't let yourself be too discouraged because you're always going to find cool stuff. Like last week, if you guys remember, I showed the um, Magic the Gathering t-shirt and I said I didn't know it was worth it. I haven't looked it up yet. Well, we looked it up and minimum I'll be able to get $150 for that t-shirt. I listed it for three, but minimum like 150 because it was dead stock. There's no other dead stock ones out there. So I think like 200 for it. Um, and that wasn't even like, that had been in a bin. Like I, it wasn't like. It was passed over. It had been out for like half an hour. Like somebody didn't see it. I don't think they looked at it and passed over. I think they didn't see it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and it's a flip it. Oh, Susie. Susie. Susie wants to pay for some music. I'm kind of like a singing prostitute. Right? Sure. <laughs> You're a singing hoe. I'm a singing hoe. I will sing for money, but not well. I will not sing well, for guys. my supper. Not well. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lori, that sounds like an awful flight. What happened? Ooh, puking. Oh, puking man. on the airplane. Oh, oh God. Oh. Sorry, pu puking into paper bags. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. So the blanket that I just showed, how much am I going to list it for? I don't know. Maybe like I'll post that for like 99 bucks. It's got a couple spots on it. I've got to uh, wash it, but it's very cloth, so it should clean pretty easily. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I just really like it. It's super cute, and the colors are bright and vibrant. And usually the, as much as I love all kinds of vintage, the brighter patterns, the better. And she, so, likes, she likes my um, thinking prostitute better than super chat. <laughs> Super chat's behind me, but I'll, I'll just sing random stuff. I used to drive Vicky crazy. Like, 
always start the show singing in Drover Nuts. Drover mm -hmm. Nuts. Anyway, let me show you guys what I got. I, I've got a mixture of things from the bins and things from yesterday's fits. So I'm going to show you. Uh, first couple of things, I got a couple of hoodies. Um, Nike stuff usually sells pretty well. You do have to be careful because they've got some weird rules on eBay and sometimes you let your stuff hold. So anything I sell now that's Nike, I do not offer international shipping. Um, they have it like a, now. There's like a thing where there's rules about like they basically have a group that they won't sell to certain markets um, internationally. And so they really keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. And so it's really only on eBay because I don't think it, it, they do it anywhere else. I've never had any, any issues anywhere else. But um, so I grabbed this Nike hoodie. It's not vintage. I think the tag says it was like uh, from 2010, but it's just a good solid black uh, swoosh. You know, it's like it cost maybe a couple of bucks. Um, Vicky paid maybe a couple of bucks for it. And uh, I should be able to sell for 40, even 30. It's like, yeah, good deal. Uh, next up, this was going back to my sourcing SmackDown title. <laughs> Uh, Vicky, speaking of FOMO, she said that, you know, she wouldn't, she, she didn't want to go one of the days this week and do her five days in a row. She wouldn't be able to miss out. And it's so true because here's what happened. This was in my hands. Here's what happened. Vicky picks this up. First of all, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and spoiler alert. It's not worth a crazy amount of money. I think I can sell it for 50 bucks. But here's the thing. Vicky goes, she picks it up. She's like, I don't know what this is. She's trying to look it up. I, she asked me, I'm like, I don't know what it is. She kind of looks around on the internet a little bit. And then she gives up and she's like, whatever. I'm just going to, I don't want it. So she tosses it back into the bin. I walk over and I'm like, well, I'll take it. And the second I pick it up, she's like, ah, ah, and tries to pull it back That's again. That's what I said? Yeah. That's how I said it? Too. Yeah. She tried to pull it back again. And I said, no, no, no. No takes these backsies. You throw it back in the bin, it is no longer yours. And she was real pouty about it, guys. Again, it's nothing crazy. There's other ones out there. It's just like a streetwear thing. This is a tie-dyed hoodie. Uh, it says teenage end of the world comedy. And then the back, it's got this kind of cool graphic. That and is it says, fun. Fun. Anyway. This is Danica. Danica. Anyway, I think she could, we could sell, or I could sell this for like 50 bucks, but I did have to shave the whole thing. It was not in great condition. I had to do the square shaver a lot. Did you wash it already? Because it was yes. kind of yellow. And I had to Still wash yellowy. Okay. And I had to wash it. A lot of that is just the kind of top of it. Uh, get off of my stuff. You threw it back. It's not yours anymore. And now you can't do sour grapes and tell me how terrible it is. Mm -mm. Anyway, I should be able to get it for 50, 50 bucks for it. Um, but seriously, the second I picked it up, she I could see the regret washing over her face. She was not happy. Yep. <laughs> because she's a big jerky jerk. Why is that making me a jerk? She threw it back. All right. Now, on Friday, this is what I was really excited about at the bins. This is where I stood there. They released the piranhas. All the, all the t-shirt bros jumped on the bins. I just went to the one closest to me and this happened to be in there. And so I was the first one to grab it. it. Definitely would have been grabbed by somebody else. It is funny because my eyeballs convinced me it said alien, but it says Alan. Um, but it's a really cool dead stock satin bomber jacket from the 80s. You see here on the front, it's this really cool rainbow. It says Alan Photographic. Like I said, I was pretty convinced it said alien, which would have been cooler, but this is cool too. Alan Photographic. And then the back says, Alan Photographics, Las Vegas, Rito, Lake Taco. Um, but it's dead stock. It's on this old Aristo Jack tag. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping like, you know, I'll figure out what I'm going to price it at. But ultimately, I hope I can get a hundred for it. It's pretty cool. It's like a cool old school photography jacket. Um, I love the rainbow stuff on it. But it's cool stuff, man. It's cool stuff. It's cool stuff. Liz says, I just read Alan Prosthetics. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, put your glasses on, Granny. Right. So when I went to Yesterday's Fits on Tuesday, I went in the back room and he had, he had just gotten in three big boxes of stuff from this guy in Denver who goes to the bins and ships him um, inventory. And he had already sorted through it and he had a $5 pile, 
a ten dollar pile and a twenty dollar pile. But his twenty dollar stuff, um, he usually gives me for fifteen. And so um, I was going through. I actually got a lot of the five dollars. There's some good vintage in there that you know maybe I wouldn't have been super excited about spending more on, but five bucks is pretty good. I know I can get like 30, 35, 40 bucks for it. Anyway, when I got to the twenty dollar pile, which means I paid fifteen for it. Um, this was in there. This is like an old uh, prison jacket in the uh, 90s, um, 90s, early 2000s. This style was very popular in fashion. Um, but this is the kind of jacket. So this is actually from Oregon. I'm from Oregon. I actually uh, volunteered and worked in prisons in Oregon for years, the educational department. But when I was in high school, my friend in high school, his dad actually ran the department uh, that made these jackets. So it was a whole thing. He was even on Donahue to talk about it. Prison Blues. You can see it kind of looks like a license plate. Prison Blues. You can see it says, made by real inmates. The face is, is messing with him. I'm so sorry. My hair is too bright for the photo. It's like not. Anyway, it says Prison Blues. It says, made by real inmates in the USA. And so this actually was made by inmates at one of the prisons at the um, Oregon State Penitentiary, but I can't remember for sure. And, uh, and, and the guys inside actually did wear these jackets as well. They pretty much all wore like blue t-shirts, uh, blue jeans, and then these, but they would have like an on them. It was the inmate. I kind of like how Liz said Alan prosthetics and then Greg said alien prosthetics. So I mean, put those two together. Alien prosthetics <laughs> was a good name. There you alien go. prosthetics would have totally sold that better. So, you know. But this style, not necessarily just these ones, the prison blue ones, um, this style of jacket, I, when I first started reselling, they were selling very well. Like in like 2016, 2017, um, I'd find them, you know, kind of like a Snoop Dogg kind of like style, these big oversized, oversized denim. Uh, but I think they're coming back a little bit. But what I was telling Jesse what the deal was, he like looked it up and he's like, oh, you can sell for like a hundred bucks. Like I didn't realize it sold for that much. Like you're getting a good deal. So for it Paul is in the chat do you know the guy that made it do you know specifically the guy that I made don't it? know specifically the guy that made it I do not and they don't say on there who the guy is made it and and Liz says you need to patent the brand um alien right said that was my high school band name <laughs> all right next up this is also from yesterday's fits that day I think I paid like five maybe ten bucks for it um because it is they haven't gotten any Jesus stuff in a while, guys. Uh, I don't know the whole story about this. It just says, Savior of the New City. And you can see the cross up there on the side. This is from some sort of, I mean, it says Lenten Play 1999. So I guess maybe there was a play for Lent. Lots, it also of, says, lots of churches do Lent plays. They do like the Passion of Christ type of thing. But, so I don't know. I mean, I'm not necessarily good with language stuff. Is this, maybe somebody out there can tell me, is this something Filipino? Is that what that is? Or am I like totally guessing wrong? Filipino would be Tagalog. Probably. I know, but I don't know what it looks like. That's what I'm asking. But it's probably just the name of the church. Okay, but. Yes. It it's not a church that I went to uh, could, in Whitey White, Oregon. I'm asking if that's a Filipino it church. It could be Tagalog or it could be a Korean church. Or like that. Could be yeah, Korean. okay. See? Call us. There you go. Or maybe uh, maybe Crystal can chime in. So it looks like, yeah, it's like a Lent thing, Easter thing. So actually, excellent timing. I will get this listed right away. But it's got a really cool graphic, too. So I did it. All right, next up, I got this also that day at Yesterday's Fits. This was in the $10 pile. It was very, uh, I had to do a lot of shaving on it. I also bleached the crap out of it because it had some, like, major... Like it was gross. yellow, gross staining everywhere. It looked like someone peed on it and stuck it in a closet and left it, it left it out in the rain and rusted and for like 10 years. Yeah. But it came out excellent. It looks awesome. It's like a vintage uh, 90s Eddie Bauer. Um, what are these called? The chamois? Sh sh chamois. Chamois. Sh like chamois. The heavy flannel shirt, but this is awesome because it's got like a, a moose on it. It's got some meese on it. It's got rabbit. It's got dogs. It's got pointer retriever. It's got, uh, it's got ducks. It's got bears. It has a wolf. It's got a wolf. So it's in fantastic condition. It's nice and heavy, and it's now very, very clean. So I think definitely worth ten bucks. Mm -hmm. Also in the ten dollar pile, this is not vintage, but 
sometimes style alone is enough. Made by uh, the kind of company called yeah. Tatiana. Uh, this is the that's the men's yep. division. Archie's. This is Archie's. Uh, but even just the front alone, if there's nothing on the back, just the front alone. I love the style of like rockabilly. You got the Bowling little shirt. diamond kind mm -hmm. of thing going on. Uh, looks very cool. But then in the back. It has the old school, like bowling. I don't know what the style. Can you tell me what the style of the theory is? They do it on the bowling shirts. Um, but this says 190th Airborne Aces Flying High. So I think that adds a little value to it because it's pretty cool. It gives it like that super retro look. Um, and it was probably $75 new. Tatiana, I have probably 20 of her dresses and skirts. Yeah. Um, I think it's good. We find a lot of that stuff around here because Tatiana's shop and warehouse was right here in Las Vegas. And they bought out the Betty Page clothing line. I think ten dollars is cool. So anyway, Jesse's got this uh, space next door and upstairs. It's really big space. That he's got all of his eBay stuff there, but he's got he had a lot that he needed to make some room. And so that's when he had messaged me and said he was going to be going through it. He was going to give me first dibs if I wanted to come in. So I was like, heck yeah, I want to come in. And so that's when I invited along the list of the crew. So I wanted them to check out the space as well. And uh, anyway, so there were a lot of jackets and stuff like that. And so this, I'll show you the ones I got for $10. There were a couple other things, like I said, that they, that he's like, do you want any of this stuff? Just let me know. I'll give it to you for like 50% off of what I have it looked on eBay. All right. So this is one I got for $10. This is like the, the Holloway. I'm sure you've seen this brand before mm -hmm. you look at it's vintage stuff yeah. but it's a blank but it's like a kind of members only cafe racer style jacket it's got like a little little thingy in the jiggy at the top here it's got that kind of cafe racer lot. style um, but this is really cool it says united states olympic committee house of delegates meeting portland oregon 1989 so it's, again it's just kind of a, like a little interesting piece of history you know, maybe there's somebody out there who's like really crazy about collecting anything that has to do with the Olympics. So 1989, I mean, 10 bucks. Like, I think that's cool. Okay. There's going to be some random person out there that thinks it's cool too. So I can take it. Save that one. And then next up, I'm going to take $10 for this. I don't, I think this is, I mean, this could be vintage. I need to brush up on my Pendleton. I don't, maybe it's 80s or 90s. I don't remember this, this particular. And I didn't tell you if you've seen one before. I'm not sure that one might be current. It might be current. Even current though, I mean, for ten bucks, a great deal. Um, the only reason I thought otherwise is because it's got the number. No, this is this is old. And it's got the leather. It has the leather braided buttons. That is yeah. not current. So I just need to do some research to figure out. It might be seventies or eighties because this is a very different um, tag. But ten bucks this is like an old. I would have grabbed that if I had seen it. Old car coat. I didn't get in that room. Yeah. It was too full of people's. Yeah, it's in fantastic condition. It's got a, a couple of things. Like it's got a very tiny little moth hole or got it on a tiny, tiny little bit, but it just looks like a little white spot. But it's got the leather wrap buttons. It's got the really nice uh, silky lining. This um, is like a hunting car coat just because of the way it's. See, when, when you have these up here, that's usually the extra padding for yeah. hunting for your shotgun. Um, it's in fantastic condition. Yeah. There's a hole in the lining, but who cares? It's You've got a, um, a, a little moth hole back there, too, but oh, it's okay. still in great shape. Yeah. So, I mean, guys, 10 bucks, easily $100 per. Maybe more. I'll list, no, I'll list it for more, but my goal is to be at least 100 But pay 10 for it. So, mm -hmm. fantastic deal. Speaking of Pendleton, usually Jesse puts aside Pendleton stuff for me, actually, because he knows I have a thon. Uh, the way Katie loves her ski shirts, I love Pendleton I stuff. I do love Pendleton too. Uh, there was a period of time where so I'm from Oregon, so I got Pendleton stuff all the time, and I love finding Pendleton. So she can love her Pendleton all she wants, but there's never going to be a time when I'm going to give up Pendleton to her. I will give her all the hard rock. And there's plenty of other things where I'm happy to pass well, it along. Well, you this to me. Jesse would give me these jackets these that you're about to show. Yeah, she got real mad at me last time I had like three Pendleton um, robes. So. A happening woman. Um, anyway, in fantastic condition, I did the, the window check. And it has the belt. As far as I could tell, we're good to go. It is missing one button on the sleeve. Uh, one has the button, one doesn't. It really, I mean, 
I've sold Pendleton robes with holes in them for over hundred dollars. Well, same. So not worried about it. Uh, it is a medium. I, mean, it's pretty, I don't know who wears them, them to be honest with you, because they're so scratchy. Yeah. Who wants to put a scratchy robe on your half naked? body that would that's when you wear a robe right you wear a robe getting in or out of the bath or the shower or you put it on over some pjs yep. to be a little bit warm like you're not wearing like full layers of clothing who wants to put scratchy wool pendleton shit on their body without clothing but i like the plaid on this because it's kind of like a gray dark gray almost blackish plaid but it's got but it looks a little more gray but then it's got this really nice green so it's kind of grayish brown madam um anyway i like it so that easily over 100 i'll probably price it 200 150 i don't know am i wrong though does anybody else feel that way why do you want to put yeah, scratchy know. clothing on your bare skin i mean i guess because first of all nobody's putting on think about when these were popular, when they were originally made like you would my grandpa would wear the full-on uh pajama suit he had the pajama bottoms and he had the long sleeve button down pajama top. Mm -hmm. He put a robe on over it. You're not, it's not up against your bare skin. They're not walking around with their weans dangling around, rubbing up against hard or like uh, scratchy wool. Nobody's like, I wasn't thinking about people's weans dangling. <laughs> I'm just saying, you were like naked skin. I was thinking like your butt, your arms, your back. Like that's it. Yeah, you got clothes on underneath it. It slipped in slipper beds for God's sake. Like nobody's walking around naked under the robe. Yeah. Okay. Baseball trying to make it into the robe. Not in the olden times. It's from the 70s. It's not that olden times. My parents didn't sleep in separate <laughs> beds, you weirdo. But my grandpa in like the freaking 80s was wearing his, like I said, full on pajama suit. Ugh. All right. Hey, Sunny. All right. Next up, I've got, okay, now I've got a letter sweater. Maybe you guys can help me with this because I, because let me tell you, uh doing the google on spa doesn't help much spa what's spa 74 does anybody reckon i guess i can do i'll do like a google it's search something p academy it's gonna be an academy for yeah. it to be an a at the end i'll do a uh google right chris bradley trying hard not to picture katie's <laughs> naked grandpa he wasn't naked he had his full he had his full pajama suit on pajama suit yeah I pajamas. Why is well, he because because it's like button down. Like I always think it's so like those pajamas are so weird because they're like collared with buttons. like it's like you're wearing like a fancy suit, but you're going to bed. <laughs> Pajama suit. Anyway, if anybody knows, I'll do the Google lens on it because that'll probably that symbol hopefully will come up. But SPA 74, it just gives me a lot of results for places you can go get facial. <laughs> Kelly says, I'm so glad your grandpa wasn't hanging his moon out. <laughs> Anyway, right. why do we always delve into like the weirdest? Why do you gotta be a naysayer our... about it? All right, this is this was made by Allison Knit and Virgin Wall. I'm assuming this is probably from what, like, the... yeah. I mean, again, I don't know if that's the number 74, about... but yeah, that tag, tag is that tag is 50s, 60s. Yeah, there we go. See, like that. You're all a bunch of pervs, is what you it's are. True. It's Funny true. says we're all weird. You're a bunch of weird pervs. Now this I love, which cracks me up because our median audience age has got to be like fifty-five, just based on the statistics. We have some younger, some older, but our median, median yeah, age is older than that we're comfortable with our perviness. I guess nobody cares. Nobody cares. All right, I love this. This is the brand is Cornell. Seventies hand loomed in Don. I don't know how to pronounce it. Donegal, Ireland. Ireland. This is in Ireland. Pure new wool. And I love the colors on this. It's really cool. I'll get this close up. But this is a really nice hand loomed grandpa core. But look at look at how cool this is. Back to grandpa purpose. First of all, we've got the leather wrapped buttons, which is very 70s. Very 70s. 70s. And look at the look at the color variations. Look at the color variation in the, yeah, it the wool. Blues, it's got blues. Grays. You can see like a little speck of a little bit of red. It's like gray. Nice. Like Grandpa this party before. This one's a nice one. It is a nice one. Pay ten bucks for that. A little small. What did you sell this for? About oh, twenty-five. Yeah. I like that. That's nice. And no, no bonuses or jackpots last night. It's a little itchy, no. scratchy, thick cardigan. Um, this. Yeah. It's not as scratchy as, as like. It's not wool. It's not wool. Yeah. 
but that one you because of the way that it's made you want you're not wearing that you're going to wear a shirt under it too so all right, next up, uh, I got two things left. Next up, I have this jacket. Now, Claire was there from this perfect She was looking at stuff as well. And I saw her holding this jacket and I was like, it's kind of like when, step off kind my of, shit. No, that's no, what you were saying. That's not what I was saying. <laughs> it's kind of like when I watch Vicky and she sees somebody uh, at the bins that has something that she wants. I'll look over at her and she'll be doing this. She'll be like looking, she'll be looking, but she'll be doing this. She waits till they leave and then she pounces on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do that. So, Chris, the one that you see listed is probably from yesterday's fits. It might they, be. It's probably the same one listed. Does it say yesterday's fits? Um, because it they have a lot of the stuff that Katie bought was their stuff that was already on yeah. eBay. And he's gonna end it. So I'm betting that that's the exact one that hasn't been ended yet because yeah. there's no way that yes. yeah. I'm like, there's no way that there's more than one exactly like that. Um, anyway, so this jacket, Claire had picked it up with a bunch of other stuff, but she, she was just kind of like, picking up stuff she was interested in, and then Jesse needed to tell her how much. And this was one that apparently she passed on because uh, I got it, and I'm like, he wanted $80 for it, and I was like, heck yeah, I will take $80 for that. All right, we'll give you $80 for that. So um, this is from Dead Stop. This is from, wait, does it say on it? Like, I... I look it up. I know. Anyway, so it's chalk line, uh, but this is from the 80s. This is Space Lab 3, NASA. This is the Space Lab 3 team. Look at how cool this is. Okay. So that was an actual mission that went to space. I think it was like a week or so long and it came back successful. And uh, it was with the Challenger. See, that kind of NASA stuff sells very, very well. If it's specific, if it's specific or whatever. Mm -hmm. A lot of people collect space stuff. Um, I pay, you, know, you can buy the patches and stuff, but this is like an actual jacket. And um, I did a quick, I did like a real quick search today and I couldn't find any, like a, I couldn't find a jacket like this. So it's going to be a little bit tougher, like figuring out how much I want to price it at. But I mean, I'll probably put it up for like 300. Um, I gave him 80 bucks for it. Um, this is something like, you know, I'm okay with like pricing stuff to move for a lot of things, but then there's certain things where I'm like, I love this. So I'm definitely going to price it to let it sit for a while until the right person comes along and wants to pay up for it because it's so freaking cool. I love my space stuff. Like I said, it's on a chalk line label. I think it's from like 85. Is it really the Challenger? I think so. Before the Challenger blew up? Was it the Challenger? Which one? Hold on. The Challenger's the one that blew up. Honey. Hold on a second. I'll tell you what it is. But yeah, it's not when it blew up. I know it's not from that. I'm just saying the challenge. I think the one so. That I could have killed everybody. Yes. Give me a second. I'll tell you. Space Lab. And that was in what? 85, 84, 83? Uh, Space Lab 3 was 17th flight of their shuttle mission. It was the Challenger, April 29th, 1985. Um, and it landed successfully on May 6, 1985. Which one is the one that blew up? Challenger. Okay, but they did that. I literally just read that and it said it was successful. The Challenger one was a couple of years later. The blow up was a couple of years later. Okay. Uh, it doesn't mean that it was not still the same freaking shuttle. Okay. okay. But, but I'm telling you, all I'm saying is this jacket was not from a mission that exploded in. in, in uh, yeah, 1986 in was the Challenger. Yeah. Thank you. So I knew it was not from that mission. It was. Okay. Stop at the arguing. All right. Yes, ma'am. So this is very exciting. This was my favorite. This was my favorite piece from the week. This was my favorite thing um, until Teresa came over today. And it turns out she was a little sneaky. sneaky. I think she was, honestly, I think she was looking for ways to spend money at yesterday's week to like support those guys. And uh, she bought some stuff for herself. But then she saw something that I was drooling over. Um, there was a, a, one particular jacket. And I asked Jesse how much wanted for it. And I don't remember what he said. I know it was like at least $300 because I was like, when he said it, I was like, yeah, that's really nice. Bye. Um, I was like, there's no way he was going to. I know he gave that. her a deal, but I don't know what. I have no idea what she paid, but it had to be a pretty penny. Um, anyway, she had him sneakily wrap it up in a sweatshirt she also bought, and then she handed it to me today, and I was like, <laughs> It was a very nice gift. See? I didn't get a gift. <laughs> nope. You guys, this is so cool. I don't think you're going to be able to handle it. Look at this. The cars. This is the cars. This is the band. See on the front, it says Electra. 
I don't even know what, so this is gonna be difficult. I think Jesse has some information about it. She did, I know he, did, he was he saying, did. he was saying it was like a roadie jacket. It was a roadie jacket um, and it was made, Electra was the record. I didn't show the that. 80s. And, but I just don't know where he got that information from. I need to talk to him. I wasn't paying close attention because I wasn't gonna buy it. Uh, but I knew he was saying it was like a roadie jacket. So I don't know if he like, knows because of who he bought it from and they had information, which I need to get from him now. Um, but this is crazy cool. This might even be from the 70s, though, because the cars were big in the 70s. Um, based on, like, the, the zipper, yeah. The zipper and everything. Might, if it's, it's not 70s. 70s, it's very early 80s, like pre-83 80s. But, guys, it's effing reversible. It's Mother satin. Reversible. It's cream-colored and uh, red. Almost like a gold. It's almost like a light gold. Um, reversible. I mean, what the hell? It's in great shape. Uh, I very briefly looked it up, although it's difficult to look up anything in cars, because it's cars. Um, and I didn't see anything similar in the, in the very brief amount of time I searched. But this is kind of one of those things where it's like, is there even another one out there? Like, how do you even comp that if you can't find any similar? If it's something that was like super exclusive, like very, very difficult. Uh, but then the tag is right here. Because again, reversible. Oh, I didn't know there was a tag. Yeah, reversible. You always want to look in the pockets. Uh, and it says hard act to follow is handwritten and that's medium. So I mean, yeah, this, this probably was like made specifically for the band. Mm -hmm. When I, I mean, sold a bunch of stuff for Aerosmith, when I sold um I had Tom Hamilton stuff, I had a bunch of things that were custom made just for yeah, because they like he wrote that it was a the size, mm -hmm. not even on there. So, um, so yeah, I probably yeah, Greg, I probably will list it for five hundred. I really sometimes there's like this, like who knows what it's worth, who will pay for it. You know? Exactly. Um, but it's freaking ridiculously cool. And Teresa, I'm a hero. You can see the really heavy, thick metal, zipper. thick metal zipper. Mm -hmm. So, very, very cool. What's so that? That's your piece de resistance? Yes, it is. That's it. And that's it. And I'm hungry and my stomach is growling. It's been growling. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's embarrassing. You should be embarrassed. <laughs> now I got to figure out what to be here so she doesn't murder me. I mean, I'm at the hangry point. I'm actually, I think I'm past the She was the at the hangry point. point before we started the show, guys. So the car's coat was a gift, actually. Katie didn't pay for anything for it. It was a gift. When um, I asked, I asked him to how much. And he, I don't I remember what he said. It was either 300 or 500, he told me. That he would, like, so I honestly don't know. Minimum 300. Um. Yeah, so it's just crazy. And crazy, she does. Crazy. She closes the show with a banger. Mm -hmm. Jill, we had a lot of fun with you too. It was a good time. Yeah. We're definitely going to do it again. Um, you know, get back to doing my meetups monthly, which I have been doing. Um, we'll do another meetup in April. It won't be as big as this one. It'll just probably be worth talking about doing maybe a, a bowling meetup yeah. um, with our local resellers coming and doing something, going bowling. Um, we've talked about it before, and I think it'll be fun. So. We can double sold something, guys. Why? Hold on, let's check real quick. Is it going to go to the same person? Did the same person go to two different platforms and buy it from me? Let's find out. Let's find out. What do you think? What do you think the answer is? No, one's going to Texas. One's going to California. Well, you know which one you're canceled. Well, I'm going to have to cancel the Etsy one because it's going. I don't need to eBay, but dang damn it. It's like a San Diego t shirt signing anything special. It happened in the last five minutes. Like they both sold within the last half hour. Like, how stupid is that? The used yeah, vintage San Diego t shirt. Yeah. Anyway, that's it, guys. It's been a long show. Yeah. Uh, we had about 100 people at one point. We're down to about 80 or so watching now. So do hit the thumbs up on the way out if you'd like. Uh, yeah. And we will see you again next week, if not sooner. Listen, maybe, guys. Maybe we'll film some additional content this week. Probably um, not. Not going to happen. Uh, I'm going to be busy sourcing. But listen, we're going to the bins Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we will report back to you on Sunday. All right? 
yeah. then have to be very selective. Yeah. How many days? Okay. Then be very selective and only get the coolest bangers. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a great week.